Okay, in this video, I will be discussing line following and covering a basic approach to how to follow lines. Later in this video series, I will cover a more advanced approach to line following that actually is faster than the basic approach. So keep watching these videos if you want to learn more. Okay, so first, what are the basic methods that you can use with one sensor to follow a line? Well, essentially, there's two basic ways or two common ways to follow this. The first is the intuitive way. You start inside the line, and you just make sure you stay inside of it. So if my mouse here is the robot, I would, at this point, just go straight. If I start to veer off toward the side and I hit white, I bounce back. And then as I hit white again, bounce back, and just stay inside the line. The other option is a little bit less intuitive, but actually turns out to be faster and easier to program. This would be you follow the edge of the line, bouncing back and forth from white to dark, and so on and so forth along down the line. So because this way is faster, I'll actually be focusing on that in this video. So now a bit more in-depth approach to this edge following method. Okay, you're going to basically have two states. Your light sensor can be over a dark color or over a light color. And it's going to have two actions, veer towards the right or veer towards the left. So in this case, it's over dark, so it's going to veer towards the left. Now it's over light, it's going to veer towards the right. And hey look, it's now over dark again. So we're going to veer back and forth down the line. So I put together a little animation to show this. It's light, dark, light, dark. And you can see how it bounces back in a somewhat jerky fashion. And that would be the way that an edge following program would work. So here's the basic idea of the program. Okay, If the sensor sees a dark color, you're going to turn left gently. And if it sees a light color, which is the other case, it's either going to see dark or light, if it sees light, you're going to turn right gently. And you keep repeating that as many times as you can, okay? Several hundred times a second. And computers are good at doing things very fast and very repetitively. So this is a perfect task for a computer, okay? Now, how do we find what is dark and what is light? Because those are relative terms, and computers deal in absolute terms. We use something that's called a threshold, which is a really fancy term for meaning the edge point or the border point, okay? Anything greater than the threshold is going to be considered light. Anything less than the threshold is going to be considered dark. The equation to define what the threshold is is up here, which is really the maximum value that you can receive minus your minimum value. That should be a plus. Maximum value plus... minimum value divided by 2. It's really your average value. Okay, So for all practical purposes, if your light sensors are seeing things correctly, 0 will be dark, 100 will be light, so your threshold should be about 50. Okay, You can adjust this based on what your actual values are. Okay, But when in doubt, use 50 as a good threshold. Okay, And now we're going to, in I'm going to take a break right now, and in the next video, I will dis I will actually write a program that follows that basic algorithm step of if dark, turn left, if light, turn right. In the next video, I will write a program to do that in NXTG and walk you through step-by-step step how to do that. See you in the next video.